This isn't our first run-in with ASUS's Pro Workstation focused motherboards. That honour would go to the WRX80 Sage that we used in our Threadripper Pro review a few months ago. And that motherboard is still the most incredible motherboard to have come across my test bench. And today, ASUS has yet another entry in the ProArt series, in the form of the Z690 Creator Wi-Fi for Intel's brand new 12th gen Order Lake platform. We take a deep dive into its features and see if it lives up to its name. The ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi of course carries Intel's new flagship Z690 chipset with support for 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs and comes in a standard ATX form factor. This is a DDR5 only motherboard, so DDR4 RAM will not work with this motherboard. And if you have been looking at the B-roll carefully, you would have seen that there are two sets of mounting holes for coolers on this board. The ones further out are the new LGA 1700 spacing, while the ones closer to the CPU are the old LGA 11 5X or LGA 1200 spacing. ASUS has done this on all of their 600 series motherboards, so that LGA 1200 coolers can be mounted on this board. This might tempt you to reuse a cooler you already have, but do not do this. No! God, please, no! 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 Why? Well, the socket LGH 1700 actually has a slightly lower Z height compared to the older LGH 1150 something or 1200 sockets. This means that if you do want an LGH 1200 cooler to this board, there will actually be a small gap between the CPU and cooler, and your brand new 12th gen CPU will overheat. Please do go out and get either a cooler. Please do go out and get either a new cooler with support for LGA 1700 or a mounting kit made for LGA 1700 from your existing coolers manufacturer. Since it's almost certainly going to cause confusion when budget users get their hands on the 600 series boards, it's a little strange for ASUS to even have the LGA 1200 holes on the board. With that out of the way, let's talk about the rest of the board. Starting with the VRM, the ProArt Z690 features a plentiful 16 phase V core VRM with 70M power stages. With a nice chunk of aluminium attached to it as a heatsink, the VRMs are robust and well cooled. For power connectors, the motherboard requires 8 plus 4 pin EPS power connectors for the CPU. There is also a PCIe 6 pin power connector beside the 24 pin ATX connector for additional power to the PCIe slots if you're using multiple GPUs. Speaking of the PCIe slots, this board features bifurcation of the CPU PCIe lanes for the first two slots. For single GPU setups, plugging in the GPU in the top slot will give it the full 16 Gen 5 lanes. For dual GPU setups, using the first two slots will split the CPU's 16 lanes into 8 Gen 5 lanes each. Realistically, with the current GPUs not supporting PCIe Gen 5 yet, that's 8 Gen 4 lanes to each GPU, which is still pretty nice. Last but not least, the bottom slot is also full length, but it's only wired for 4 Gen 3 lanes from the chipset. Like most Z690 bots, there are 4 M.2 slots all at Gen 4 by 4 bandwidth, with the top slot connected directly to the CPU, while the other 3 are connected through the chipset. All 4 slots feature heat sinks and thermal pads, as well as ASUS's M.2 quick release thing, which eliminates the need for screws. There are a total of 8 PWM headers on the board, 3 at the top edge, 3 at the bottom edge, and 2 right in the center here right by the CPU area for your ARL pumps or CPU heatsink fans. You also get two 5V ARGB headers by the bottom edge, with one more at the top right where there is also a 12V RGB header. For ports, there are a total of 8 SATA ports, though 4 will be disabled if the last M.2 slot is used. For internal USB ports, there are two USB 2 at the bottom edge, one USB 3 at the right angle here, and a Type-C port here, which comes in at a 20 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 speed. The front panel connectors are at the bottom right edge of the board, and ASUS also includes an extra block of pins to make plugging these in easier. Moving on to the rear I.O., there are two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the rear panel, with DP1.4 display pass-through for both. These are input ports for output through the Thunderbolt 4 ports, not for the iGPU. For display out from the iGPU on non-F CPUs, there is a single HDMI 2.1 port. A display port would have been nice too, but that's understandable given the space constraints. Other than the Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports, there are also 6 USB 3.2 Gen 2, which are 10 gigabit ports. For networking, there is a Marvell 10 gigabit Ethernet port, an Intel 2.5 gigabit port, an Intel Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Usability-wise, the BIOS flashback button lives on the rear I.O. panel, which will become more useful next year as Intel's next-gen CPUs are likely to be compatible with Z690 as well. The clear CMOS header is at the bottom edge of the motherboard here, which isn't particularly convenient if you have a PCIe device in the third slot. 
There is also no postcode display, just a few debug LEDs at the top right corner. So, how does this board stack up? We already know DDR5 provides some sizable performance boosts for creators. So it's perfect that this board is DDR5 only. For creators specifically, the triple GPU support and quad M.2 support is nice, but isn't exactly stand out amongst the rest of the Z690 boards. What does stand out though is the Thunderbolt 4 support, if that's a feature you need. As an improvement, we would like to see ASUS put postcode displays on more motherboards, especially expensive boards like this one. For professional users where downtime is money lost, a postcode display can really help debugging. And that's it for today's video. Let us know what you like about this board in the comments below, and we will see you in the next one. Bye!